Hi and welcome to this short lesson on the introduction to SIRDs. So what are SIRDs? Well, here are some number systems that you already know about. So at the beginning, back in primary school, you probably started learning to count using the whole numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. In secondary school, you now manage to extend your knowledge of whole numbers beyond zero to deal with things like negative temperatures in science, and these are called integers. In between whole numbers and integers are fractions, and to make them even more accurate in some cases, for measurement purposes, we have decimal fractions. Now, just like these number systems, SUDs are just a new type of numbering system. So let's go back and look back at Pythagoras calculation they might have done. So in this triangle we're trying to calculate the big side when the other two sides are 2 and 3 metres. So start off by using Pythagoras' formula. You substitute in the values, evaluate your squares, add together your numbers, and in the last stage involves you having to work out the square root of the number 13 in this case. Well, when you do that, unfortunately it gives you a rather disgusting answer. It's a bit long-winded to write. Also, it's rounded because it doesn't all fit in your calculator screen, so it's not truly accurate. So let's go back a stage. Let's see what happens before we worked out in the calculator. It was given as the answer was the square root of 13. This is much easier to write. And not only that, but it's exactly correct. And this type of number with the square root sign is what we call a third. So here's a few more examples of what could be thirds. And what we've been asked to do here is to try and discuss and find which numbers above and the square root signs are going to give us thirds or not. So let's start off with root 25. You can see root 25, it's an integer. Because when you work out the square root of 25, the answer is exactly 5. It doesn't have a messy answer, therefore it can't be a third. Root 15, however... It's a third, because when you try and work it out, it gives you a very long decimal. In fact, it probably goes on forever. Root 5, it's also a third, because when it's worked out, it also gives you a rather long decimal answer. Root 16, however, gives us a nice integer value of 4. And lastly, root 3, when we work that out, once again, it's going to give us a large decimal number. So you can see from what we have here in these examples, that a third is going to be the square root of a number which gives you a very long decimal answer where a number that's not a third, which is in square root form, works out exactly to give you an integer answer. So what you want to do now is stop the movie and decide amongst yourself which of the following are thirds. Okay, hopefully you've had a bit of time to chat amongst yourselves and work out well, which are not suds. Excuse the lorry going by outside. So, number one, root four, gives the answer two, so that's not a third. Number two, the square root of 40 gives a large decimal answer, so it is a third. The square root of 400, well, that works out in your calculator nicely to 20, so it's not a third. The square root of 36 in question four, the answer to that is 6, so it's not a third. However, the square root of 2, if you try and work that one out, it gives you a very long decimal once again, so it's also going to be a third. Question 6, the square root of 16, we've already seen, it gives the answer 4, so it's not a third. Question 7, the square root of 1604, that one there, is a third. Square root of 496 in your calculator, large decimal answer once again, so it's also a third. Square root of 39, it's a prime number, so the square root of all prime numbers except for 1, which you can look at for yourself, is a third. Square root of 145, now that's also a third. Question 11 and question 12 are a little bit different from the rest, they contain decimals. And when you work out the square root of 1.44, the answer you get, although it's not an integer, it doesn't have a long decimal answer. It works out as an answer of 1.2, so that wouldn't be a third. Similarly with question 12, if you work out the square root of 0 0.01, the answer comes out exactly as 0 0.1. It doesn't give you a long decimal, it just gives you a nice neat decimal, and therefore that can be considered as not being a third either. So hopefully this has explained to you what thirds are, and if you go into the textbook directed by your teacher, you should find more questions there where you can practice in deciding what may or may not be thirds. Thanks for listening.